In today's video, I'm going to talk about open systems theory and how that relates to organisations. Um, but we're going to start off by thinking about what is a system because obviously it's called open systems theory and it comes from a more general theory called systems theory. Um, but what we're doing is we're looking at an organisation and over the years, um, academics, theorists have been trying to figure out a way of describing what actually happens in business, what happens in terms of how do we structure it, what's the best way of organising the company, the organisation. Um, so in systems theory, we have the idea that the organisation is made up of lots of different systems and it sounds like a really fancy word, but really it just means all the different components within the within the organisation that combine to create the organisation. So um, as you can see from the slide, that can include things like the individual departments, so manufacturing, sales, finance, HR, the staff within the organisation itself. Possibly you might break that down into like your management teams and things like that as well. But you're also thinking about the products of the company, the manufacturing processes, you know, if it's if it's a manufacturing sector, obviously it will depend on the type of organisation it is, what it does, but the actual activities that take place within the organisation, the processes and the procedures that set all of those things out as well, they would all be part of the system, so how we do things within the organisation. Um, but it would also include things that happen outside of the organisation. So with systems theory, you're thinking about everything that has an impact on how the company operates, how it does its job. Um, obviously, I'm saying companies, but this would apply to the public sector as well. So um, that's why organisations probably are a better term, but I'm aware that I'm also talking about organisation in terms of how we structure and run things within the organisation as well. So. I don't want you getting confused between the different ways I'm using the, the same word. So if that system theory is about how all these different aspects within the organisation all work together and interact and how they impact on each other and how they are able to do their jobs. So if you don't have the staff, um, it's going to slow things down. It could disrupt your production line, for example. If the production line breaks down, again, you have to wait for a mechanic to come out. You have to get the machinery fixed. And until that's repaired, you can't produce the goods. You can't deliver the goods to your customers. So all of these things interact. And that's the idea with systems theory, that all of these things are interdependent on one another. If we take that from system theory to open system theory, the difference here is that system theory might look at what's happening within the company. An open system theory believes that the organisation is open to the external environment. So it's not just about what happens internally within the organisation, but there has to be a relationship with the external environment. So um, customers, suppliers, where you're getting the raw materials from um, and all the different things that are happening in those environments will have an impact on the organisation. If you're a coffee manufacturer and you're importing your coffee from Africa, North America, Southern America rather, and there is civil unrest in a country that supplies your coffee, then you're going to have problems getting that coffee because it's got to be imported from a country where there's perhaps political unrest. Or even just think just now how difficult it is to import goods from other countries because of COVID restrictions, because um, the supply chain has been massively disrupted because of COVID. Um, even just think about after the 31st of December when the restrictions on trade within Europe 
came into force and you had all the lorries queuing up in Dover who couldn't get into the continent or they were having to wait a long time till they got the processes all sorted out. So those sorts of things, how they impact on the organisation is really, really important as well. So it's not just what happens within the, the organisation, but we really have to understand what's happening in the external environment as well. So open system theory looks at what happens within the organisation, but it then also has to apply that to the, the, the wider world, if you like. You have to understand the, the environment that the, the organisation is actually operating within, whether it's locally, the domestic market, understanding your client base, understanding whether locally you're able to get the employees who have the skills that you need. These are the kind of things that the company should be thinking about when we're thinking about an open system theory. So open system theory has, I've got some information on this slide, but I'm going to show you a diagram. But one of the key things here um, is that with the open system theory, you start off with what goes into the company and then they go through what's called a transformational process. And um, I'm now going to look at the slide so that we can see that in a little bit more detail. So this is what the open system model looks like. So you've got inputs, the process and outputs. So the inputs are everything that gets put into the company, whether that's employees, gas, electricity, um, raw materials if you're a manufacturing and, you know, working in a manufacturing environment. So let's say, for example, we are a chocolate manufacturer. That would be the cacao beans, the sugar, the milk, whatever else is going into the chocolate to flavour the chocolates. All the raw materials, you'd probably get your packaging, you would have your staff, and as I say, electricity, gas if you use gas as well. So whatever it is that's required to manufacture chocolate bars. The process would be the actual manufacturing process that occurs within the organisation. So turning the cocoa beans into chocolate, creating the chocolate, um, cooking the recipes, putting the chocolates into moulds, packaging them up. All of those different processes would all be part of the process. So that's what I mean by transformational. You put your raw materials, your ingredients through a process, as I say in this, in this example, a cooking process, cook them, package them, and the end result is a packaged box of chocolates or bar of chocolates that then goes out to the shops and gets distributed to the retailers. So we go through that process and this is what the open system model looks like. So I've given you uh, an, an example. Um, I've not applied it to the chocolate company that I was just talking about, but we can see that the inputs are your raw materials, your staff, packaging, utilities, so that's the gas, electricity. Um, and it can be anything at all. You know, if you've got apprentices, then it would be someone who's not very skilled, not very knowledgeable, and the process could be part of their training and their education. And the output at the end of their apprenticeship could be a qualified employee or you know, someone who's qualified, who's more highly skilled. So the output has got to be different from what was put into the company at the beginning. Um, so as I say, you've got your manufacturing process, the processing itself, the packaging, training staff, and probably lots of other things that could fit under that category as well. But this is really just to give you a feel for what's actually happening in the model. And then your outputs, are, as I said, are your finished product. If you're providing training to your staff as part of your process, then having trained staff at the end of it again is an output. Um, because it, because the example I'm working with is manufacturing is the manufacture of chocolates, there may be spillage or spoilage that doesn't quite meet the grade, so it gets rejected. You may have wastage, so you may not use up a hundred percent of the raw materials that you're putting in. There may be some that you throw away, or that gets dropped, or whatever. Um, there will be pollution. Um, but hopefully as well, there will be happy customers. 
we want happy, contented customers that like our products and come back to buy more chocolate. So that's our open systems model. Um, in general, this is what it would look like. Um, <clears throat> and certainly if I was asking my students to show an open system model, I would be looking for them to put it into this kind of layout. But the other thing which touches on what I talked about before about companies needing to be aware of not just um, what's happening internally in terms of you take your inputs, you put them through a process and you have outputs. We're not just concerned with what happens within the organisation. We have to be aware of the external environment because if you don't anticipate a problem with your supply chain, for example, you're going to have a disruption to your manufacturing. If there's a skill shortage and you can't actually find employees to actually come in and work for you, then again, you're going to have problems. And equally, if the market dries up, you know, people don't have money and aren't buying chocolate anymore, you're going to have a problem with, with your sales if the competition is doing something that means that your chocolate is more expensive than theirs. You have to be able to respond to these things. So to understand the external environment, you probably are also thinking about the need to do particularly a pest analysis. So political, economic, social and technological factors, or if you want to extend it, you could do a PESTO which has legal and environmental issues as well. You know, given that in the example we talked about, I talked about pollution and um, although I didn't mention it there, you know, things like being aware of the carbon footprint and how customers feel about sourcing locally, pro locally produced goods, if at all possible, um, looking to make sure that you're aware of what your customers are looking for, what their... Um, own ethical values might be, you know, do they want you to be using fair trade products, for example, as well. So that's a pest analysis or a pestle analysis, and that is purely focused on the external environment. But if you also do a SWOT analysis, then you're looking at both the internal and the external environment because your opportunities and threats are more about what's happening in the external environment that you can take advantage of with your opportunities or if you're aware of what your threats are, then you can respond to that and you can be prepared for it. And again, the threats are external, but if you don't deal with the opportunities and threats as you identify them as they arise, they could become strengths and weaknesses of the organisation in the future. So again, it's really important that you are paying attention to those. Um, so an open system theory, as I said before, would be this model, but you also have to be aware of the external environment. And as well as doing something like this, you would also be looking to do a SWOT and a PEST analysis at the same time as well to support your analysis of how effectively and efficiently the organisation is um, operating. Hopefully you found this useful. If you do have any questions, please feel free to um, ask any questions.